Harness racing and standard bred horses come to life each month in the colorful pages of Hoofbeats, the sport's most widely read magazine. We call it Reporting with Horsepower. Don't miss a single issue. Subscribe online today. Dr. Lori Gallatin of The Ohio State University is an expert in the treatment of equine respiratory disease. And obviously horses that spend a lot of time going to the shows or sales or any place where young horses would congregate like at um, racetracks and those types of things, those horses are at an increased risk um, both because of the, a lot of horses coming in there, their age um, the, and their immune status. Well, there's three very common infectious um, upper respiratory diseases, um, flu, rhino, and strangles. Flu and rhino are both caused by viruses, and strangles is caused by a bacteria. Um, all three are highly contagious, and they can affect um, the horse's performance, and obviously they'll have to be off work for a while, usually three to four weeks after um, developing clinical signs. With strangles, a lot of times you'll see the horse will have a fever, um, usually over 103. They'll have um, a mucopurulent nasal discharge or they'll have the snots um, and they'll have um, swelling and or drainage from the retropharyngeal or submandibular lymph nodes. So we're feeling for the submandibular lymph nodes. And what are you looking for? To see if they're um, enlarged or hot or painful to the touch. They'll usually react. Um, it'll be pretty obvious that they're enlarged, or um, obviously if they're hot. And then we also have the sub or the uh, retropharyngeal lymph nodes here that we look for. And a lot of times in strangles, these will be enlarged and sometimes draining. These guys can be contagious for two to three weeks, um, even after the abscesses have subsided. Uh, they become infectious within two or three days of the fever. So if you catch the fever quick and get them isolated from the others you may um, decrease the chances of a huge outbreak. With strangles, we can actually see, um, we can occasionally see pus coming out of the guttural pouches, um, which are the little flaps on the side of the upper airway. Um, and again, you can also see um, an inflamed upper airway with that as well. The disease got its name as strangles because these lymph nodes will get so enlarged they actually can occlude the airway and the horses strangle or choke. So um, sometimes these guys need to have a tracheostomy done or a hole put in their trachea so they can breathe. Dr. Lori Gallatin uses a flexible scope to diagnose upper respiratory problems. Good oh boy, just behave. Those two little flaps that are up there are the opening to the guttural pouches. This kind of hole in the back back here is the nasal pharyngeal recess. And then we have our upper airway. Um, or retinoids that are moving back and forth. That's what closes down the trachea. Horses with um, flu or rhino usually will pre present with uh, um, a cough, and if you sort of squeeze their upper airway a little bit, you can elicit uh, a cough pretty easily. They may have some increased lungs or tracheal sounds. They um, also will have a fever generally up over 103, normal temperature being um, as high as 100.5. If it's flu and rhino, you may have a little bit more of a nasal discharge than normal, and it can start off as clear, but eventually it can turn white, yellow, or green. One way of preventing it as well is to quarantine new horses that come in, and obviously it's very difficult to do that at a, a horse show or at the racetrack, but if on your own farm you can quarantine them, um, usually we say 21 days-ish monitoring temperatures, uh, making sure there's no snotty noses or anything like that before you put them out with the herd. Mm -hmm.